At the end of this video lecture series, students will be able to differentiate between cohesive and adhesive forces um, and utilize them to explain features such as viscosity, surface tension, and capillary action seen within liquids. So many of the properties associated with liquids are going to be due to the internal attraction between atoms and molecules within the substance, um, as well as with surrounding objects such as beakers and things of that sort. So um, the features that we're going to be looking at today, such as uh, surface tension, capillary action, viscosity, um, and beating, are all going to be determined by the intermolecular forces um, within molecules uh, uh, of the substance, as well as potentially with surrounding beakers and, and, and surfaces that the substance comes in contact with. So understanding cohesive and adhesive forces are going to be very important for the remainder of the lecture. Um, so cohesive forces are intermolecular forces that bind similar molecules um, to one another. So basically something like H bonding or hydrogen bonding in water, that's an example of a cohesive force. So basically it's um, interactions between the substances that we're paying attention to. Adhesive forces are intermolecular forces that bind the substance that we're paying attention to um, to the surface of your container, such as a piece of glassware, like a graduated cylinder, or beaker, or what have you. So if we go ahead and we look at the examples that we have here, we have water and mercury in two separate test tubes. Okay, and what I want you to notice is that the curvature here in the water is, is kind of U-shaped, okay, while the mercury curvature is basically um, inverted. Okay, and the cause uh, of the shape associated with these two um, substances in this glass container have to do with cohesive and adhesive forces. So in the case of the water, of course, there's going to be um, cohesive forces between the water molecules themselves. Okay, but what you need to understand is that the curvature is caused by an interaction between the glassware here okay, and the water itself. So what ends up happening is that the water molecules interact with the silicon dioxide um, bonds inside the glassware. Okay, so what ends up happening is you have adhesive forces that form between the water molecule and the surface of the glassware. Okay, and that causes this U-shape or the meniscus as we call it. Okay, now mercury on the other hand, right, what ends up happening here is that uh, the mercury uh, atoms like to interact with one another. So the cohesive forces here are very strong. And so what ends up happening is that um, you see this U, uh, inverted U shape because the cohesive forces um, are stronger than the adhesive forces that may form between um, the glassware and the mercury atoms. So in this case, uh, we have adhesive and cohesive forces in each example, um, but they cause a dramatically different effect depending on um, the dominance of the cohesive or adhesive forces. Viscosity is how much a liquid resists um, so viscosity is a feature of liquids that basically uh, measures how much that liquid resists flow. Um, so the more viscous a substance, the uh, less likely it is to pour easily from a container. So if we were to put water and say molasses in two separate cups and to pour them out, we know that the molasses would take longer to flow uh, from that container because it's a more viscous liquid. Now, the cause of the viscosity is going to be related to the intermolecular forces. Um, the stronger the intermolecular forces and the better that uh, attractive forces between molecules, the more viscous the substance is going to be. Motor oil is a very um, common example of where viscosity is measured and, and utilized differently in different types of engines. Um, so a lower uh, number in terms of the oil that you purchase is going to correspond to a less viscous liquid, um, while a higher value is going to um, correspond to a more viscous liquid. So um, the reality of it is, is the intermolecular forces are going to be the main determining factor of viscosity, and the stronger those intermolecular forces are, uh, the uh, more or the higher the viscosity will be. Surface tension is going to be another feature of liquids that is going to be directly related to intermolecular forces. Um, the stronger your intermolecular forces, the stronger the forces of uh, interaction are going to be at the surface of your liquid. So um, the reason though that surface tension exists and that um, animals such as this bug seen here are able to walk across the surface is because the intermolecular forces at the surface of the liquid are going to be stronger than those in the middle. Okay, And the reason why is because 
those liquids at the those molecules or atoms at the surface of the liquid are interacting with half or less um, surrounding atoms. So the intermolecular forces here are being spread amongst less molecules, and they're subsequently going to be stronger. Um, so what ends up happening is the intermolecular forces at the surface are going to be stronger, which allows more force to be applied to the surface by, say, the legs of a, a, a water-walking bug. Now, obviously, if you supply enough force onto the surface, you're going to break the surface tension and subsequently, you know, fall through or sink to the bottom of the water. Um, so what you guys need to understand is that as the intermolecular forces increase, this surface tension is also going to increase and you're subsequently going to have um, basically a minimization of the surface area and subsequently a, a more probable or more likely surface that can be uh, passed over with very light um, bugs or, or, or things of that sort, leaves, what have you. So beading is something that we see especially you know on a freshly waxed car um, surfaces that have uh, discrepancies between uh, water's polarity and obviously um, the nonpolar features of the substances we put on the surface of our windshields or our cars. Um, so basically if you take a polar substance and you place it onto a nonpolar surface, what's going to end up happening is that the cohesive forces of that polar molecule are obviously going to be very strong. Um, and there's not going to be any competition because the nonpolar and polar molecules are not going to want to interact. So there's not going to be any adhesive forces in this context. So what ends up happening is um, we form basically beads or droplets of water on the surface of our uh, Rain-Ext windshield or you know our freshly waxed vehicle. Um, the same would be true as if we had a you know a polar substance um, on a surface and then we dropped um, a, a nonpolar liquid onto the surface. You would also see beading there. Why? Because the cohesive forces are going to be stronger than the adhesive forces. So capillary action is something that we observe with liquids uh, when they spontaneously rise in maybe a narrow tube or up a napkin. Okay, and what ends up happening is that there's basically a combination of cohesive and adhesive forces working um, in concert. So what ends up happening is that the attractive forces or the adhesive forces that start to exist between the substance um, and the container wall um, ends up pulling on the surface of the uh, substance. And what ends up happening is that that kind of stretches the bonds um, that basically form uh, the surface of the liquid. And what ends up happening is that the surface tension pulls the liquid's surface back together. And what ends up happening is that the um, surface basically gets pulled up. And so what you see is a transition um, basically up the glass container. And so basically that will continue, that, pu that pull between the um, adhesive forces of, between the glass and the substance, and then the cohesive forces uh, within the surface of the liquid um, will basically walk the uh, liquid up the surface of the glass. Now, eventually that's going to stop when the force of gravity on um, that liquid, okay, so um, is basically equal to the cohesive and adhesive forces. So obviously we're going to need to have uh, similar uh, types of intermolecular forces possible. Um, and so like polar, polar, nonpolar, nonpolar, those are the things we're going to be looking for with respect to our adhesive um, and cohesive forces in this context.